What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Free China Pod. It's been what two weeks now? Yes. It's burr. Gucci. It's cold. What's up, dude? I don't think I have any Taiwan specific news today. For some reason, I I'm not Re- really sure why. Recall of Freddie Lynn's coming up. Uh, the ninth uh of January, I believe. Which district is he in? He is he. Is he party list or is he uh, SMD? I think he's SMD. He's in Taipei. I don't know which district of Taipei. I try not to pay too much attention to Taipei, but I do like him. He's Taipei's a shithole. <laughs> so, uh, Hell yeah. Sorry to people who live in Taipei, but uh, move out. Get a job. Get a fucking job. Get a job, sir! Um, Which yeah. are urban elites. Yeah, I was heartened to see some of... Uh, some friends from that go to school in Taipei saying like, "Oh, after I graduate, I'm getting the hell out of here. It's a nightmare." I was like, "Yes, use your hate." Uh, what else? Oh, the Gaojiayu. You hear about that? No. What's... Another uh, Taipei legislator that was uh, like physically abused allegedly by her boyfriend. So that's you see, you that's mean been a city. Council member? No, 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 no. She's a legislator. Like a... Oh, okay. Yeah. She's in the Li Fa Yuan. And, yeah, she's pretty famous. I, f- I followed her on Instagram for a long time. I don't know why. Like, she just got recommended to me, and I followed her. But, yeah, she's kind of like the generation before, like, all the um, Sunflower people got in there. And, um, I don't know. Which party? She's DPP. Okay. She's had some, like, uh, there's been, like, weird stuff around her. Because she's, like, a moderately attractive female legislator, so, like, she gets, like, a lot of uh, positive news or, like, positive following on social media, but also, like, a lot of hate, obviously, at the same time. So she's had, like, some weird stuff. Like, there was stuff about her complaining about, like, the housing prices in Taipei. And then, like, pictures of her apartment that was, like, a little bit messy surfacing. It was really weird, but anyway... Yeah, recently uh-huh. she she said that like her, her... I know nothing about that, folks. <laughs> we know nothing about dirty houses. Always spotless, cleanliness next to godliness. Uh, yeah, she said that her boyfriend like locked her in a hotel for two days and like, yeah, physically abused her. So it's a crazy story. And then yeah, like I mean the Taiwanese shitty tabloid media has covered it not super well from the limited coverage that I've read. <clears throat> so that's unfortunate, but pretty unsurprising. In terms of ta- other Taiwan news, there's been a bunch of countries basically reaffirming their support of Taiwan. Uh, Ireland recently passed something in one of the houses um, of their legislature. Uh, Belize reaffirmed its commitment. <clears throat> um, Belize? Do they have diplomatic relations? Yeah, because... Um, They were basically reaffirming because of Honduras, uh, because Castro got elected. Did you hear about that? So there's, um, you remember when they, like, uh, what was it, like a a decade ago when they did the coup? Was it a decade ago? I don't remember. They. There was a coup in Honduras. Okay. That was tacitly backed by the Clintons. And. um, According to who? Well, according to Clinton, I mean, she basically did apologizia for it. Like, she came out and was like, oh, it was fine. Like, this is what we had to do. What, what do you mean we had to do? I don't understand the context here. <clears throat> was the United States involved? Was the Clinton Foundation involved? Well, the Clinton Foundation, I'm not sure. I don't know about the money exactly. But, I mean, she 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 at least tacitly endorsed it. She's like, it's what had to be done, basically. And it was, like, within their full legal right, even though... Though, to the extent that I understand it, it was an illegal coup. I mean, the the military basically shuttled him out of the country in his pajamas at night. Okay. So, but anyway, suffice to say, the the president that was ousted, the democratically elected president that was ousted in the coup, was this woman's husband. Mm-hmm. So she just got elected with, I think, 51% of the vote. And she... That's tight. It's tight, but I mean, it's like the U.S. elections, right? Um, like Donald Trump. <laughs> And she, well, Trump lost, but hey, you know, electoral college is a hell of a drug. And she basically came out and said that 
she's not sure about where her allegiances will lie based on the election was stolen Taiwan <laughs> Taiwan and uh, China but that's why so that's why Belize basically reaffirmed their commitment to Taiwan mm -hmm. and but recently her VP came out and said that they will continue to support Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say because she initially came out and was like, we might switch our allegiance or our recognition to China. And then like right after her cabinet, like members of like her uh, expected cabinet and her team. It's a problem with a lot of these fucking leftists. They got no well, say leftists. It's a problem with a lot of these non-establishment politicians. They come in and they think that they can get quick money by switching by, oh, by China's and uh well they i mean they can but here's the other thing is that it's also the problem with the u.s sometimes out and out backing them but at least even you know not not talking uh saying that these these coups are bad like i mean when you're uh but this has nothing to do with the coup well it does because i mean it it is like that it's the block of countries like i mean obviously taiwan had nothing to do with it but they're you know maybe she wants to piss off the united states because she has a grudge against them which, Maybe I have no idea. I don't know any of the context. I don't know how much the U.S. was involved. I, I'm, I'd like to see some details before I make any comments on this. That's but fine. You can say whatever you want. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's not like something I've studied in depth, but from the interviews that I've watched with Hillary Clinton, people asking her about it, she's basically uh, said like, like it was a good thing and it was fine, and uh, that and like from everything uh, that I've heard about it, they supported it. Now, mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, sometimes I mean, sometimes coups are good. I just just put that out there. It could be, but in this, in the, it, I don't think coups of democratically elected leaders are good. It depends if the democratically elected leader is usurping the constitution and trying to break apart different institutions. Just because someone's democratically elected doesn't mean they are acting in the interests of continued democratic elections. Right, that's but, like saying Putin is democratically elected. Well, well, that's that's a or little, Kim Jong Un. That's, that's a little bit different. I have no Th idea. Those those elections there is ample evidence to show that they are not democratic. I have seen zero evidence that the Honduran elections were not democratic. I have no idea. I don't know anything about that context. And as you said, this is decades ago. So it was, I think a decade ago, but again, I'm, I don't have the information in front of me, so I don't have, uh, I don't have like exact dates, but anyway, I mean, we can look into it more, but like Let's... I'm saying, but just, just as you're saying, like, mm -hmm. Coups can be good. That's not wrong. I, I, I actually agree with you. But like I said, I don't think it's good in terms of uh, fair democratic elections. And I think that yes. also that can come when you support coups that are against democratically elected individuals, it can come back to bite you in the ass later. And that seems like it could be what's happening, though, like I said, it, it seems like um, it's not as – obviously – when she made that statement, everyone was like warning signs, like "Oh, red alert, red alert! Taiwan's going to lose one of its fifteen remaining di uh, like mm -hmm. diplomatic allies." It doesn't seem like it's that dire right now. We'll have to wait and see. We're going to have to I wait. Wonder how January. much money she got from the Chinese government um, in her campaign? I would say right now probably none, but I'm not sure. Why would she offer that then? Why would she even? Well, make that because statement? like you said, they're and then backtrack they're, it. Well, she didn't. Uh, she didn't necessarily backtrack it. I okay, think why did she, she make it, it in her there. cabinet backtrack? This is like a Joe Biden thing. Well, I think partially is because, like you said, there there is a lot of promise of money, though a lot of – I recently talked about this on one of the FCP updates, is that there's a lot of countries that are backing out of these Belt and Road initiatives because of the, the debt peonage that it puts them in. Right. But this is not – this is, I mean, this is not Belt and Road. This is just no, but it could, recognition. but it could be. It could, it, it could end up with loans or something like that. I think that's probably what she sees out of it. I do have one thing. Mm -hmm. This is pretty related to this. Is the Solomon Islands? I don't know if you saw what's been going on there. No, the Solomon Islands switched diplomatic re recognition two years ago, mm -hmm. and the prime minister basically, there, the people are furious. He's done a terrible job. Oh, wasn't the there country. like a riot or something? Yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. riot. I did see that. So it's another interesting case where. Basically, the people are pissed about ch a lot of it. Was is the doggo? Uh, we'll soon return to your regularly scheduled programming. And we're back. Basically, the the riots were concentrated in Chinatown. So, so yeah. out of their population of about I think seven hundred and fifty thousand, they have about fifteen hundred uh, people of eth ethnic Chinese origin. And I don't know what that means because they had uh, diplomatic relations with Taiwan for decades, which means there were probably some Taiwanese people there. Mm -hmm. But after the switch, I don't know if all of them left and they were basically replaced with 
Chinese people, and this this is a recurring theme within South Pacific, actually, that basically Chinese money flows in, and it's not very friendly. It's often exploitative, and yeah. people basically were like burning Chinese shops and stuff like that. Three people died. Yeah, it was a mess, That's and basically terrible. they're calling for the prime minister's resignation. They were pissed when he switched diplomatic recognition. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they're pissed at him now, and unemployment is out of control there. So that's an, another interesting case. But what's also interesting is that Australia came in, uh, intervened because, well, they have a security agreement. Solomon Islands mm -hmm. have a security agreement with Australia. So Australia sent their military in to help the police force restore order. So it's interesting that Australia right now has particularly close relations with, uh, with Taiwan is a little bit anti-China. And yet they're supporting the Solomon Islands who switched. But actually neither of these countries, even though they have different positions regarding uh like support of taiwan neither of these countries uh have diplomatic relations with taiwan yeah. as of now well there's i mean there's very few i mean even like the big one now like uh in lithuania they're like they don't have formal dip diplomatic relations and like there's, but i heard they're they're moving to they're it. moving towards it but i don't it we'll see we'll see if they do i think i think with all the pressure from china they might do it as kind of a fuck you they might. And I've. Uh, I also saw that, um, and I, I mentioned this. Everyone should be on the YouTube checking out these updates. They're also on the podcast feed. But I talked about also the Netherlands um, passed a resolution in one of its houses to to basically. It's kind of all these like mealy mouth things that are like we should support Taiwan and it's like in international bodies to like uh, join like the WHA and to join uh, the UN etc. Or we should push like the executive branch to like be more supportive of Taiwan, which is, is good, but it's, it's like baby steps. So I don't know how exactly how to feel about it. Like I feel positive about it, but at the same time, I'm like, it's just so little, but anyway, it's, it is good to see that. And yeah, hopefully Lithuania does recognize Taiwan and then we'll see, maybe it will come to, maybe my article will come to fruition. It's very interesting too, that a lot of countries that, like the United States go out of their way to like, basically encourage countries to keep diplomatic relations with Taiwan, but at the same time, they don't diplomatically recognize yeah. Taiwan. So it's it's very hypocritical, to well, say the least. Yeah, they're scared of, of ending any sort of ambiguity. It's their their big thing. Must remain ambiguous. In, in the EU also, I don't know if you saw Olaf Scholz, I guess we watched the debate, we covered the debate in, mm -hmm. in Germany. He's the PM. Do you know who the foreign minister is going to be? No. None other than Annalena Baerbock. Oh, the Green Party? Green Party, yeah. So basically she's saying she made a statement. She's the uh I mean she hasn't she hasn't taken that position yet, but basically she's saying like no longer can we just talk about human rights. Oh hell yeah, sister. <laughs> yeah. Looks like they're gonna take a little bit harder line, but that they're talking about I mean it's still mainly diplomacy. And it, Germany because of the uh the Nord Stream pipeline, I think they mm -hmm. they're gonna take a very soft approach in general to everything. It's gonna be quite conservative as they always have been i think uh yeah i think they should i think it would probably be easier for them to be more hardline on china as they're like while they do have a lot of like economic ties with them it's they're, a lot yeah they're um in terms of like distance they're much farther away from them so i feel like that might be easier than like russia where like russia is kind of almost to the point where it's like you i think th you just cool things with them and let them collapse like i don't know that's I don't well, know how so that's that's an interesting thing right now. There's two things that I have right now. Mm -hmm. One is about Russia basically claiming that they have a red line over over Ukraine, Ukraine which is yeah. That, yeah. But the other was that because of the spike in oil prices, that Russia and a lot of petro states actually are becoming more stabilized and more, let's just say, confident. Hang on, call of the wild. Bring him out here, sit on your lap, bud. Anyway, just the idea that the because the price of gasoline has gone up, states are more uh, petro states, in particular, like Saudi Arabia. I saw is getting a lot more brazen. Russia and even Iran, they're a lot more confident in their actions right now, especially relative to the United States because of the spike in oil prices. It's kind of stabilized their economies a little bit. Well, the U.S. totally dropped the ball in Saudi when they just murdered Jamal Khashoggi, and then they uh you mean you know, the clinton foundation and, yeah and then <laughs> and then their good buddy trump went over there and rubbed the orb and got a bunch of free goodies from from the saudis so i love pondering surprise, mine surprise surprise 
You Spe- like that meme? Huh? You did you talk that's in from the pondering you were orb meme, right? Oh, I mean I mean I remember like when it happened for that's what I'm talking about. But there's definitely a lot of memes about it. I uh speaking of the Clinton Crime Foundation, um I just saw that Tucker Carlson asked Who? Hunter Biden to uh send a letter of recommendation for his child for to get into college, which is hilarious. Wait, he asked for a, a letter from Hunter Biden? Yeah. Because there, this is an elite club, and you're not in it, Ari, and neither am I, unfortunately. Ari is currently trying to calm his dog by playing drill music, <laughs> turning him into a future stabber. I've got a shelter dog here, and he's uh, he's a little bit scared. He he grew up in a, a cage. I think he wasn't treated very nicely, and he right now, he, without having the like, basically a cage, a little safe space to hide in, he. Is very very anxious. Even in the cage, he's anxious. These fucking millennials in their safe spaces. Need Definitely to, millennial. Need to sit in your cage all the time. <laughs> Why don't you come out, you liberal, you pink-haired hippie? A lot of people are saying there's going to be war over Ukraine, but I, I I still think what I said before stands that they prefer they prefer the situation of a destabilized, basically failed state Ukraine rather than. More sanctions. Yeah. That's, I, I also saw there's a documentary they're saying that basically in the last 10 years, their economy has gone down. Like their GDP is down like 40%. Ukraine? No, no, Russia. Oh, Russia, yeah. Which is like, and now United Russia. They, I mean, they have pretty tight control, but people are not very happy. But most people are just apathetic. And yeah, I mean, what, like drug use and like uh, suicides and then like, you know, suicides by proxy. Uh, via like alcoholism and drug use are are shooting through the roof because you mean in Russia? Yeah, or? yeah, in Russia because they're just they got all yeah. that cheap heroin from Afghanistan, that crocodile. I mean, what like what? I mean, what are the, like you said? Like the economy's in the in the tank and like Putin, and they have terrible weather. That is also true, but and Putin's not gonna do Putin. anything for them. Pooty poot, as as George Dubs called him, little pooty poot. I got one more thing about China, which was. That J, you know the uh, the head of J P Morgan, which is Jamie Diamond, Jamie Demon, whatever the fuck his name is. I, I'll just say Demon, Demon, Demon. He made a joke basically saying that uh, J P Morgan, because they both were celebrating their like hundred something year, year oh, anniversaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, J P Morgan will probably outlive the Chinese Communist Party. And then he's, and then the it was supposed to be a joke. And then uh, J P Morgan's like, No, 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 we didn't mean <laughs> that. <laughs> We'll definitely fail in the next few years. <laughs> we'll have to get bailed out again. Yeah. Well, he might be encouraging their their failure by by well, insulting China. But he, he recently le- uh, went to uh, Epstein Island, uh, Hong Kong, probably Epstein Island as well. Speaking of, Gislaine's on trial right now. I think day four or five of her I trial. I believe it was pronounced Gislaine. That's why I said Gislaine. No, Gislaine. Jiz, Lane Maxwell. Uh, yeah. I I'm pretty sure she probably cut a deal. Otherwise, she probably would have been suicided as well. But uh, yeah, I don't know. The whole Epstein thing is is still like mind boggling to me. The fact that literally you had people being like he's a CIA asset. <laughs> Who said that? Acosta said that. Jim Acosta, the CNN host. Not Jim Acosta. Alexander Acosta. I have no idea who that is. Is the U.S. Attorney uh, General? <laughs> in which in which tiny state <laughs> florida oh yeah well which is where he was means where, where he was tried because they didn't actually try him with like federal crimes they decided to try him and it, i mean it means a lot like he <laughs> i know i'm just being sarcastic <laughs> it's just crazy and i mean anything that comes out of florida i don't trust though i mean that's honest. somewhat fair but like the fact that like he was literally accused like not accused he was convicted of my like trafficking minors and using them as sex slaves, basically, and was allowed to leave jail for basically all the hours except for when he was sleeping. Like talking about Epstein. Yeah, when he was when he was in the his Florida prison, he was allowed to leave jail every day. So why didn't he just hang himself in his own house? Well, that this was this was before he was arrested again. That was the, this when he, using square scare quotes, hung himself. Uh, he was in new york he was not actually uh, this was after he served his time in florida 
So this was a se- this these were separate incidents. Okay. But um yeah, I don't know. That's I I feel like this is something that in like 30 years there'll be like a you, CIA declassified documents just being like yeah, he was a CIA asset like you know, entrapping like wealthy individuals to make sure that they like complied with like the US government's line on things. Hit that story is crazy. We could we 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 could and potentially should do like a whole podcast on that at some point. I'm not super into conspiracy theories. You should probably get it's, Danny. It's not even really I mean, the thing is it's not really conspiracy. Like like I told you, that Alexander Acosta thing is just public knowledge. But this is the literally the definition of a conspiracy that a group of individuals conspire to hide information. Right. Which, that doesn't mean it's not true. It's right. No, a, no, but I, it is a conspiracy. I, okay. I mean, fair enough, but that's the thing is there's so much that's just like public knowledge. <laughs> that's not it, it that like when, right. when what I'm saying is when people hear the word conspiracy theory, they automatically like a lot of people's sphincters tighten up and they were <laughs> they get very nervous. But it's not I don't like that language. <laughs> <laughs> Our sphincter is tightening right now. I don't like this at all. <laughs> very uncomfortable. Uh, anyway, yeah, just suffice to say she's on trial right now. I don't know. I hope my, my, my baseline is that I hope that the victims get justice. That's what I'll say. The victims get, oh, oh. (laughs) What's funny about victims getting justice, Ari? It sounds backwards. It sounds like the victims are having to face justice. I don't hope they face justice. I hope they get justice. I hope they receive justice. Well, we'll see. One of them's already dead, so. The victims? One of the, the, One of the yeah, yeah, yeah. accused perpetrators. Yeah, well, that's what happens when the CIA... When you're involved in a conspiracy. That's what happens when the CIA hangs you in your cell. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> but I got one other U.S. thing, which is... Did you see Fauci and Cruz going at it? No. I Either time I hear either of those two morons talk, I get angry. Two of my favorite people. My heroes. Ted Cruz was like, Fauci belongs in jail. And he's like... I belong in jail. <laughs> oh, what yeah. about no, January, January 6th? 6th? Yeah. <laughs> I just cringed at that. Just, like, what the fuck does Ted Cruz have to do with January 6th? Two absolute fucking <laughs> trying to rub their one brain cell apiece together. They both belong in Guantanamo for the <laughs> Hell record. yes, brother. I love that. One for having a terrible beard, <laughs> and the other one for being responsible for more than a million American cases of COVID. Million deaths? or Yeah, probably a million deaths. Almost a million deaths. Well, if you look at... Um, we're at like 30-something million cases. At least. If you look at the... In- well, yeah, we're over half a million deaths on the books. But if you look at like the increase in like uh, in deaths overall, it looks like there could be a lot more. That- They're overcounting. <laughs> it's all the excess mortality. They don't know what the real cause of death is. What accent was that? Anthony Fauci. Oh, I thought that- <laughs> at first, I thought you were doing like a like a New York Jew accent. You mean Anthony Fauci? Yeah. He's definitely not a New York Jew. New York Italian. When you speak against Fauci, you speak against science. <laughs> that's also That was also not a very good accent. He's gross. Yeah, I, that's that's exactly what I thought when I saw that comment, too. I was like, I mean, Ted Cruz, you can say maybe like he tacitly endorsed some of the things that happened on January 6th, but he's not even the worst of them. And like, what a horrible It's comeback. all Pence's fault for certifying the results. <laughs> This is getting more and more Jewish. <laughs> it's eventually, <laughs> we're eventually gonna end up with like a Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ted Cruz comes out and he's like, "The virus only affects the one percent of one percent of the did weakest, fattest individuals." Cruz? Yeah, <laughs> and then you did a Bernie Sanders. You said Bernie Sanders. It's huh? gotta be like, <laughs> leave the virus the <laughs> hell alone. <laughs> The virus is honestly leaving 99% of the people the hell alone. Like you should leave my wife Heidi the hell alone. Don't spill the beans on Heidi, Donald. Uh, wow. Stupid. What's the don't spill the beans? You don't remember from? that? I remember that from The Lighthouse. That was... You spilled your beans. Uh, <laughs> have you seen that movie? No, I need to watch it. But I think... You I, spilled your beans. I saw that. I think that's in the trailer, though. You show me the trailer. It's so that's weird. creepy. Why don't you spill your beans, Tommy? But the spilled the beans comment is from a Donald Trump tweet. Oh, he spilled all his food everywhere. The dog spilled the beans, folks. You don't remember that tweet from Trump? You spilled your beans. He says, wow. 
at Sinner to Ted Cruz. That is some low IQ ad you just did with a picture of Melanica in G- Melanica. <laughs> Melania in a GQ shoot. Be careful, or I will spill the beans on your wife. <laughs> you spilled your beans. <laughs> you spilled your beans. <laughs> I forgot. It's like a it's like a salty sea dog that says that. You spilled your beans. <laughs> it's Willem Dafoe who does like. Really good in that role. That that movie is amazing. Yeah, you have a there's a review of it up on the website. Go check that out, folks. What? Who is William Defoe? William I know, Defoe. William. <laughs> Bill Defoe. Who is Wild Bill Defoe? He played uh, he played the bad guy in like the first Spider Man. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. He's in Boondock Saints. Mm, he plays really the green go- the Green Goblin in in yeah. Spider Man. Okay, I know him now. I forget what else he's in. I've seen him in a I number of movies. It. Usually when I hear names, I'm like, I know that he name. He was in Fargo. Is that him? Was he, is he the Fargo? father in Fargo? It's it's literally been like probably over a decade since I've seen Far- Fargo. Great movie. I, I think that's him. I just have a feeling. The the Like the main dad? Yeah. It's not him. You sure? Who's the main dad then? I don't know his name. Some nerdy nerdy guy. Check it. Let's check. Not the TV show, movie. folks. Movie. Wow, that movie came out in 96. That's crazy. I didn't realize it was that old. William H. Macy. Oh, William Macy. I knew it was a William something. Will Willem something. Oh. Will something. I got you now. Oh. I heard a little something. There's a little doggo in the bedroom and he won't come out play. Anyway, close enough. I, I imagine he was in it. This neighborhood has been extra crazy lately. Yeah. Maybe I've been at home more. But there's been so much noise. There was like a... Howling dog behind the house today. That was probably him, man. Was he howling when you were in the room? No, but I but I went out for a few minutes. It was bef- it was before you guys left. You sure. Yeah, it was it was definitely behind the house because I could hear it coming from my rear window. Oh. And I went over there, and there was a dog there, but he started like snarling at me and barking at me when I went over there. Gross. But he was just like howling for like so long. Um, and then like the people behind our house, like play their, vid- their cell phone video games on full blast at like midnight. It's just, uh, we got a wild neighborhood. Victory. Here. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, whatever that video game that Olivia likes. It's she that doesn't one. play that anymore. She plays some other stupid games now. PUBG, Candy Crush. She plays one game with like, like motorcycling up a hill and she plays another game where, yeah, it's a lot like Candy Crush. It's just Gross. like a bunch of beads and shit. Beans. Don't spill the beans. You spilled your beans. <laughs> Why don't you spill your beans, dog? Yikes. Did you hear that the Women's Tennis Association pulled all of their yeah, you told me. future competitions out of t- China? Yeah, I heard that's it from crazy. you. It's crazy. It's, uh, <clears throat> like I said on the this the last stream I did, that's, that's some big balls nonsense right there. I love it. It's something the IOC would never do. In fact... Oh yeah, the IOC and, is like she's fine, folks. <laughs> yeah, they they tried to obviously cover for the Chinese, and what came out is that um, Zhang Gaoli, the guy that is accused of of raping her, met with the IOC, and he was one of the main guys that actually got Beijing twenty twenty two, the Winter Olympics that are about to happen in January, done. So, if that tells you anything, conflict you, of interest tells you anything you need to know about the IOC, just being best buddies with like rapists. I don't think feel like I need to say it, alleged because what are they going to do? Alleged, innocent until proven guilty. I thought this was a democracy. Well, yeah, China is a beautiful, shining city on a hill. China is democracy. A democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. You're right. You're right. I take back what I said. Of course. <laughs> that's all I got. Um, I've been trying to like pay more attention to taiwan news and just not pay attention to u.s politics because it's just like a it's just not worth it anymore it's a good idea you can uh i can give you that that code you can run it you could see all the news yeah we're gonna easy peasy i've been doing the fcp updates mostly on taiwan and a few things in china so people should go check those out but we're gonna try to put some like quick snippet articles every day like multiple up on the website so if you're trying to read a little taiwan news um go check those out we'll we'll hopefully be have have those up on the website soon so make sure all are checking out the website if you're not you're you're fucking up and uh i don't like that language (laughs) (laughs) and uh when you're over there 
you should make sure uh, to disable your ad blocker. And then if you see any interesting ads, you go ahead and click on those bad boys. And, that and buy. It really and buy. helps us a lot. And buy. And buy whatever you click on. That helps, yeah. And uh, also, you can uh, go over to the Patreon and avoid all that. And then get invited to our Discord. You get free postcards. I'm about to send out some postcards to the Patreon members this month. So go check it out, folks. Send you a little personalized greeting with a personalized film photo that Ari and I took ourselves. So How could we both take the same photo? Well, one of us took it ourselves. You'll have to guess which one. Yeah, you can guess. And if you guess it right, I'll give you a thumbs up. And if you guess it wrong, no more cards for you. Made me think of the, the soup Nazi in Seinfeld. No soup for you. I know he, you pay like 80 bucks and you can get him to, to come on your video. Oh, really? Yeah, he's on one of those. It's like Cameo or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on Cameo. It's like $80 or something like that. That sounds like a waste of my money. <laughs> I'm glad he's doing well, though. Wow. Like, he's like a bit... He's like $80. A, yeah, but he's like a... I mean, he's like a bit actor. Like, those kinds of people that aren't, like, famous, I'm glad they're living their best life. I'm glad he's happy being on Cameo. Man, if I could make $80 a pop on Cameo and make my life off that and do, like, my hobbies... Like, in all of my free time, I would take that deal in a second. Sounds like a pretty hot deal to me. If all I gotta be like is like, I'd rather be homeless. <laughs> that sounds horrible. No thanks. I disagree. That would be the hardest disagree we've had on this pod so far. Alright, I, I I don't have anything else of, of Good night. substance right now. We love you, folks. Yes, but... spill your beans. <laughs> FCP, Zueda. Why just been?